Hello, in this lecture I will introduce the conformal boundary. The conformal boundary is necessary to understand the conformal confactification of solutions of the Einstein equations which we will discuss later. Okay, let us start with a uh, space-time, which, as we know, is represented by a Lorentzian manifold. And then, let us uh, put forward the idea of the conformal boundary. Well, what is the idea? The idea is that we want to look at our space-time from the outside in order to gain understanding of properties of the space-time which we cannot see if we are inside. Well, the situation is similar as the situation which happens when you are inside a forest. If you are inside a forest, you cannot see the forest because you have all tre trees around you. You have to get out on from the forest and look at the forest from the outside. And by doing that, you will be able to see things, for as for such as the shape of the forest or its extension. So we want to do something similar here. But, well, the question, the obvious question is, what, does, what is the outside of uh, our Lorentzian manifold? We need to define that some way. And what we are going to do is we are going to introduce a larger manifold and embed our manifold into the larger manifold. Okay, so suppose that you have, uh, well, this is going to re represent our space time, okay? And then we are going to choose a bigger manifold bigger Lorentzian manifold, so this is going to be uh, a bigger space-time, and we want just take our space-time and put it inside our uh, the bigger Lorentzian manifold. By doing that, we will take uh, the bigger space-time as the outside, and so we will be able by, by, by putting ourselves in the bigger manifold until that we will be able to look at our space-time from the inside, sorry, from the outside. And so we will uh, be able to define things such as the shape of our space-time or the boundary of our space-time. Okay, so how are we going to do that? How are we going to embed our uh, original space-time into a bigger manifold. This is going to be achieved by means of a conformal embedding. So, we are going to introduce a map, which is, goes from M to our uh, bigger manifold M tilde, such as that, well, phi, sorry, phi is an embedding, So it means that, well, the image of M under phi is a proper subset of M tilde, okay? And then the map, well, the restricted map, uh, well, what is the notation? What notation should I follow maybe? Uh, well, let me just use the notation uh, phi bar. This map is a diffeomorphism. Okay, so this is just an embedding. So uh, the in with this, what we have is that uh, 
the uh, th this set here corresponds to uh, the image phi m under the embedding and okay but the thing is that uh, since this is uh since we are working with uh Laurentian manifolds we know that Laurentian manifolds have something attached to them which is called the causal structure which is defined by the fact that this uh G menu, this d d that we have a Laurentian metric okay so we are interesting in an embedding such that this uh causal structure is preserved in some way and how are we how do we get that well we get that if we consider uh, if we demand in addition that this map is a conformal map so what does it mean it means that <coughs> uh, the following property is satisfied we take the pullback of the metric of the big uh, Laurentian manifold then we have that this pullback which is now a uh, tensor in the uh, starting manifold is conformal to uh, our original metric okay so this means that uh, Okay, and well, since we are assuming that uh, our map phi is a smooth map, then it means that uh, this uh, this uh, function chi is also smooth. Okay. Well. Uh, that's the situation now and well <coughs> the, the the this this uh set the this uh this bound this set the, the the boundary of uh of this image well let me just write it down we, we have uh the following set now This is uh, a set, a subset of uh, the big manifold, and this is the so-called. Well, let me just, because this is important. Let me just use the red color. This is the so-called conformal boundary. Well, conformal is because we are using a conformal embedding. And the boundary is well, because well, this uh, set is an uh, accumulation point of uh, of uh, well, sorry, is because this this is the boundary of the image of uh, our original manifold M. Okay, but well, we must bear in mind when when we look at this definition to the fact. Well, we must bear in mind the, the fact that. Uh, this definition depends on the conformal embedding we are using phi and also uh, of course uh, depends on the uh, bigger manifold manifold itself m tilde okay so this is not uh, an intrinsic set which we can attach to uh, uh, well it's not an intrinsic set which we can define only from the properties of m we need to somehow invent uh, the big manifold M tilde and the conformal embedding phi. Okay. Right. And what is the point of this? What is the relevance of this? Well, this fulfills uh, what I said at the beginning, which is that we were intending to look at our manifold from the outside. And now we have an outside, which is the manifold M tilde. And we also have uh, a boundary. Uh, at the conformal boundary del uh, which is uh, delta mm, delta m so it means that we 
are able to define uh, a sh what we are going we are able to define a shape of our manifold and we will be able we, we will be able to define prop to, to, to uh, extract properties of m which we cannot do if we don't uh, perform this uh, extension this conformal extension because well this is uh, uh, this uh, conformal embedding could be also can be also called conformal extension well this will become clear when we look at the ex explicit examples of all of these the explicit examples are going to be conformal compactification of certain solutions of the Einstein uh, equations but uh, just uh, before doing that let me just mention some uh, uh, the, the relevance of, of this function chi because well this function chi is, is a function on, 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 on the original manifold m okay but the thing is that uh, we can uh, also regard it as, as a function on, on, on the big manifold and well this is we can do that by just defining this uh, other function which is the composition of uh, chi with uh, the inverse map well this inverse map is is the map which you get uh, by inverting this uh, this mm, this set okay so uh, since I said that uh, this uh, restricted map is a diffeomorphism, then well maybe I should perhaps uh, write here the bar because yeah because this is what we are actually inverting so uh, if we take uh, this uh, inverse, well, maybe I can. Where, I, where has, can I write this? Yeah, okay. Well, I can just write this here. Okay. Close. M. So yeah. Uh, then uh, uh, since we have this and we have that chi is on itself a map which goes from m to r because it's a scalar function then of course we, we can uh, perform the composition of these uh, two maps and get this uh, this map which is now a scalar function so, sorry okay so if we perform the composition then we end up in, in, in a new map chi tilde which is uh, uh, a map which uh, goes from uh, tilde to um, R, okay. And so this, 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 uh, the, the the point of introducing this this uh, function chi, chi tilde is because uh, it, it, we will be able to use it to compute explicitly the set uh, delta m, the, the, the conformal boundary, which is now uh, defined as the set of points in m tilde such that uh, they are uh, th the action of chi gives zero. So the conformal uh, boundary is just the zero set of this function chi tilde, okay? And we can compute explicitly chi tilde once we know, uh, once we have an expression for the conformal embedding, right? Okay. So the main idea, the main ideas is are that we have uh, introduced the conformal embedding, and with the conformal embedding, we can uh, define something which is called the conformal boundary, and I will show you uh, later how can you use. Uh, the conformal uh, boundary to extract useful information about the global structure of uh, our original manifold M. Okay, and yeah, this is will be uh, achieved when we compute the 
confirmed compactification of ex explicit solutions of the Einstein equations, right? Okay, and this will happen in the next lecture.